Hi. I can I can personally attest to what Larry is talking about. I was involved in a similar situation for, in fact, a PBS client. And many of the highlights that uh, Larry is talking about, I can tick off in what happened. This also went to, to the FBI, and it's an active case, so I can't talk about it. But what I can say is that off-site backups, uh, the issue of trust, the splitting of duties are all absolutely critical. And in fact, I've seen other situations in which subtle equivalents of this are going on. For example, I'm aware of one client where in payroll, as part of their automation functions, they're giving more and more control to the HR managers in the stores to manage the time clocks. What that then means is since many of the checks are going out on an ECH basis, right. there is really a very difficult, not impossible, but very difficult reconciliation train. And some of it can be very, very subtle, such as PTO time. You start adding PTO time with a deal between the HR manager and an employee, and you've got a very difficult situation to capture, all of which says it's not a matter of always being distrustful. It's a matter of having the appropriate reconciliation stuff in place, and I can't agree with you more. The other part about backups and this sort of thing came to light very strongly for us when we looked at this because all of you out there are aware that one of the most difficult things to get clients to do is to purge their files. When we looked at these files after the fraud had been discovered, it's amazing how well these files had been purged so that you had changes, the, the change history on vendors, the change history on customers, those kinds of things, as well as GL transaction files, had all been meticulously purged, which obviously is sweeping the dust under the carpet to get it out of the way. And if they're smart enough to change their credit cards, they're smart enough to know how to use uh, DOS and, and delete files. And I'm, I don't know if you guys remember what DOS was, but uh, <laughs> I used to write DOS programs. So. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Peter. Hey, Larry, I, I just, some of the uh, things that I'm taking out of this uh, thus far, and thank you so much for doing this, um, is really that, uh, um, and it, I think it kind of cooks down to the same basic things, some of it's common sense in, in so much as locking down important documents like checks. But the right. big one here sounds like it's, it's really that separation of power. And, and by that, I'm assuming we don't want the same person entering payables and writing checks. Would that be a fair statement? True. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, there's, you can go on to AR, AP, uh, uh, even a, uh, and locking general ledger up and uh, you know, don't letting uh, distributions being purged uh, uh, only allow the, uh, one person to do uh, purging of distributions, which Passport does a great job in. Because if you look at the other accounting systems that I've been at clients, uh, it is so unbelievably loose, and especially that, it, that the other systems allow you to go back and process prior periods and and very expenses in in April when you're working in July. Uh, Passport allows gives you a warning on that. That's a great thing. Why I strongly support Passport accounting software. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have one other question. Um, yes. We're dealing with small businesses all the time. Do you have any advice for us about how you recommend to the client? about the separation of powers because they're going to say, well, you know, I've only got one clerk. What do you want me to do, to post this stuff myself? <laughs> well, I look at it this way. When a, when a CEO or an owner comes up to me and says, oh, it's impossible that I'm being stolen from, you know, I had a client that I just looked at the, uh, the, the supplies purchased at Office Depot. His son was going into Office Depot and buying all kinds of stuff. For his son was. And we caught his son, and he said, he goes, I understand. He goes, I've got to look better uh, at, at the documents that I pay. And uh, I said, you know, look at yourself. I said, you're a small company. What can you be buying $2,000 a month at Office Depot was? And he, 
it means that he, they've got to get more involved in their own business. Either get involved or lose a couple million. Well, that's certainly the bottom line, isn't it, Larry? Wow.